On this week's World of Saltwater Fishing, we're taking the Mark 6 on a 70 plus mile one way run west of Key West in the fabulous Florida Keys. We'll be using light tackle to catch groupers and snappers in deep water off the fabled Dry Tortugas. This is one episode you do not want to miss. <laughs> Was world of saltwater fishing celebrating 20 years of fishing television excellence big fish don't stand a chance here i was hooked up to what was fighting like a big black grouper in deep water off the dry tortugas i have a 20 pound class test spinning outfit a pen clash 4000 and this fish was making short work out of this fight got me in the rocks i free spooled coaxed the fish back out fought it up maybe 15 20 feet it took me right back down in the rocks once again I was in trouble, but I'm not going to tell you exactly how the story ends just yet. But let's have a look at how we got here off the Dry Tortugas. The Dry Tortugas are really a cluster of islands that are situated about 70 miles west of Key West in the Florida Keys. A lot of people, including myself, call this the last frontier. That's because it takes a long run to get here, you'll burn a lot of gasoline, but the rewards are fishing in waters that very few people have the opportunity to fish in. I trailered the Mark 6 down to Key West to join up with Daniel Delft. Now, Daniel Delft is part of a legacy down here in Key West. His father, Billy Delft, specializes in dry tortugas charters. He's an amazing captain. But even beyond that is the man they call Captain Ralph Delft, the late Ralph Delft. I mean, my grandfather, Ralph Delf, he was the man when it came to fishing. He had, he, he started this whole thing down here for us. And uh, I wish I was able to go fish with him back when he was in his prime time. And uh, I just never got to grow up around that. So I've been listening to the stories that my dad has been telling me and he's been telling me ever since I was growing up. And it was just, you know, like my wildest dreams. And he has close to 127 or even more IGFA Lion Class World Records. There was nobody in this man's league. How could you lose with somebody from the Dell family aboard your boat? When I first spoke to George, I was telling him all about how we we're catching these big fish on light tackle. I told him to bring the lightest stuff you can bring. And uh, he brought some 20 pound outfits and 12 pound outfits, which is perfect for these big fish down there. We expect to drop down in waters anywhere from 150 to 250 feet to try to target these bottom fish. Yes, indeed, it was gonna be a challenge. The easy part of the trip was in the morning. We were staying at the Perry Hotel on Stock Island. We merely walked downstairs, jumped aboard the Mark VI. Live bait was gonna be key down here off the Tortugas. So between the live pinfish, and the pilchards and flutter jigs, we'll be covered to handle most anything that will come our way for bottom fish off the tortugas. Once we had the bait, it was westward. And from there, it was time to get on some good numbers and start catching fish. We're down here looking for a grouper's scamp and um, maybe any muttons. We were fishing typically a ridge and we were looking for any deviations in the bottom depth, whether it was a rise, you know, 10, 15 feet or, or a drop and also any fish. It was hard bottom. Daniel Delf hooks up. Oh, I'm on, Daniel. <laughs> when we got on a decent spot, we would power drift, and that is we would work the boat's throttles to try to hold us over that spot for the longest period of time. Subtle little tap, tap, tap. You want to go underneath me? Yeah. I'll hold us into it. Oh, oh don't want to do the same thing to me. <laughs> All right, we got color here. Yes, I see it coming here. All right. It's like a... I'll put this rod in the far back so I won't mess you up then. What you got here? Oh, big red snapper, red snapper huh? Big one. All right. That's a good size fish right there. Check that out, huh? That Whoa. is beautiful. And he's fighting his fish. And on that light tackle, it's given a good account of itself. And, and really, that's what it's all about. It's the sporting value, light tackle. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by Penn. Let the battle begin. 
Mako. You'll find them where the fish are. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela. Your adventure starts here. Mercury Marine. Go boldly. George will be right back. I'm with Daniel Delf of Delf Fishing, and we're off the Dry Tortugas, some 75 miles west of Key West in the Florida Keys. The neat thing about bottom fishing is that you're always in the game. You feel the sinker dragging across the bottom. You're reeling up just enough to keep it off the bottom, but you're baiting that strike zone. Then you free spool to make sure that you're still down within that zone. You're always doing something. Then you feel the bait get nervous. You'll feel a couple thumps, and then the rod goes down, and you wind tight, and you're on your fish. It, it's even the most disinterested person could stay happy catching bottom fish because it's always active. You're doing something. There's no lull in the activity. So with this style rig and uh, that depth of water, it's really key. The most critical point in the entire fight is definitely the setup on it. Um, like I said, you got that 10 foot a liter. So those fish are going down there, they're eating it. And by the time you feel it, they're tugging on that sinker and they're gonna wanna spit out the hook. So all we're gonna wanna do is just reel down as fast as you can. Keep that rod tip down and just reel. You don't wanna lift to set the hook because you got that 10 foot. Unless you can lift 10 feet high, that hook's not gonna come tight. I was probably down 15 seconds maybe. I love it when it's like that. Yeah, here he is. Jab. Scamp grouper, yep. That right there is probably one of the best tasting fish out here. And you call that as soon as it hit, <laughs> about maybe not even 30 seconds in the fight, you think I got the scam. Yeah, I mean, uh, oftentimes, really, they'll hit it and then just a slow, steady pull. The big guys might take a little drag in the beginning, but after that, they just give up. All righty. OK, I know that one's going right. <laughs> I'll try places. We're going to release this one into the skillet. Yes. So yet, we had another species to our bag that day off the dry tortugas. I talked about the first bait I dropped down on a Penn Clash 4000 spinner, 20-pound test braid, and how I immediately hooked up to a big black grouper. And you can tell when you get a big black grouper just by the way it fights. It's like trying to move a bulldozer. You gain a little bit, and just that big broom-like tail, that fish goes right down to the bottom. I could feel the braid being dragged across. I feel the sinkers dragging across the bottom, and there's nothing I could do. I have 20-pound test, and there's a monster at the other end of this line. Give me an idea of the type of bottom we're, we're over. You got light tackle. Is there any threat of a fish holding you up here? You know, there's always a chance of that, but pretty much, for the most part, it's just hard oh. bottom here. You may um, have got me just because I said that. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Give it a slack. Give him a slack. Free spool. It hold me up initially and wouldn't come out. So when that happens, you reach into your bag of tricks. You want to try to coax this fish out. One of the best ways is you open a bail and free spool it. Let the fish think that the pressure has gone away. Then finally, I do feel it move off. So I close the bail, wound tight, and I'm on a scooper, and it's out of the rocks. Mm. Oh, he's tough. He's, he's, I feel him. There he goes. Get out? He, he got out. Yeah, he did. Got to keep him getting back in there, though. Keep him away from it. That's a good fish. I know. You and your light tackle, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> We're gambling with our fish dinner, okay? <laughs> oh, hey, it is a good fish. There's only so much you can do with a 20. You might have a black grip around there. Uh, it's definitely heavy. I was trying to get there where I could get them short pumps on There you fish. go. I'm trying to get them turned if I could, but he has a change of heart. Oh, don't get me down to that stuff again. Did he get me? He got you in there again? I think he, think he got found that sweet spot again. I might have gotten maybe 10 feet or so, and it got me back in the rocks for a second time, and it wasn't budging. So I figured, well, there was my shot. I mean, how many shots are you going to get? Plus, you're with 20-pound test. I can't move this fish. Free spool again. I got him out. There he is. Uh, watch I could do with him. I'm trying to. 
It's like he's coming back now, huh? Yeah, I'm coming back over you, I think. Got to go. Thank you. Oh, don't tell him he got me back in there. He got me in there again. No way. And again, it just makes a beeline right to the bottom like it was attached to nothing and in the rocks a third time. So here we go again. I think he got me in there again. He got me in again. So what I did, I figured this was a lost cause with this fish. I took the light spinner and I put it in the back rod holder and I said, we'll come back after we get Daniel's snapper released. So we take the time to release the snapper, and I look back at my rod, and I've got pressure, and I'm winding on braid, and it's feeling differently. It's feeling odd. I'm feeling a lot of heavy weight, but I don't feel bottom. I see color. Nice, that is a big old that's a big fish, man. Big old black. There he goes, all yours. Big black grouper. Oh, you need a gas? Look how big that guy is. Look, you go on? I got you. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> got to thank you. And this one, for me personally, is an honor of your grandfather. Yeah. You know, the man. You want to know, catching these big fish on light tackle, yeah. is, it brings the sport of fishing back into it, like I said. Yeah. Not only that, but it gives the fish a fighting chance. But what a remarkable catch. We later weighted 55 pound black grouper, 20 pound test braid on the Penn Clash 4000 spinner. A remarkable catch. George Pofferomo's World of Saltwater Fishing is brought to you by Simred. Go with Simred and go with confidence. Rapala Coastal, another great day. Suffix, always use the best line. ACR, the leader in marine safety electronics. George will be right back. The Mark 6 is off the Dry Tortugas, some 75 miles west of Key West in the Florida Keys. I'm fishing with Daniel Delft, grandson of legendary Key West guide Captain Ralph Delft and son of Captain Billy Delft. The Perry Resort, it's a boutique seafaring type of property that is really elegant. The rooms range from Grand Suites, the Commodore Suites, Saltwater Studios, all the way to the Stock Island rooms. There's high-speed Wi-Fi, there's a fitness center, and all rooms feature water views and private balconies. And they have an outstanding restaurant on site. On property, they have Mad Stock Island Kitchen and Bar. Absolutely sensational food. Uh, a wide variety of menu items. If you happen to be around during the day or the family's around during the daytime at the pool, there's a salty oyster, which makes exceptional lunches. Pretty good menu, quick food. You're sitting outside enjoying the pool, overlook at the marina. Life is really good. We're dropping down and uh, the red snapper continue to cooperate and we're catching them and sending them back down to release with a sequelizer. Nice fish, George. Keep him away from those rocks. Looks like he got you in there for a minute. He did get me in. Might Run. be a uh, red grouper. Right off the ledge. Another cool thing about the braid in this situation, it's such a tiny diameter, it just sinks so quickly. There he is. Here he comes. Big old red. scamp. A scamp. Yeah, a big scamp. Can I see that leader? That is a quality scamp. Whew. <laughs> that is a beautiful fish right there. And uh, it's just, it's literally the most perfect fish you can get for eating, in my opinion. And but, there's, uh, a, there's an endorsement by Daniel Dell. Right? <laughs> fort Jefferson itself is a big attraction. It's a massive yet unfinished fortress, which comprises the largest brick structure masonry in the Western Hemisphere. People love to come out here and see it. They have ferries from Key West that will take you out. They have seaplane flights. They drive a lot of tourists to Key West, and there are a lot of opportunities for the tourists to go out and explore this area without ever having to go out on a fishing boat. As far as on-land attractions, 
taken to Key West Butterfly and Nature Conservatory. As you walk through the glass enclosed tropical setting, you'll be overwhelmed by flowering plants, cascading waterfalls, trees, exotic birds, and of course, some 50 to 60 species of butterflies from around the world. Papa's Flora Rum is a proud sponsor of my television series and their distillery on Simonton Street just happens to be Key West's second largest tourist attraction. Visitors learn about Ernest Hemingway, affectionately known as Papa, and his boat, named after his third wife, Pilar. The uniqueness of the rum blends are showcased in an educational fashion, as is the distillery process. Trademark blends include a blonde and a dark, and at least twice a year, a limited special blend is introduced. One such blend is their Marquesas, named after an uninhabited island group some 28 miles west of Key West. The Marquesas are special to me because it was my father's favorite fishing spot and I still get out here at least once a year. Papa's Pilar Rum Distillery, check it out. George's Tackle Locker brought to you by King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. A well-tuned sonar surely leads to more fish. For the most concise readings, select a transducer that will not only complement your sonar, but also perform best within the depth ranges mostly fish. For example, the transducer around the 200 kHz range is best for depth readings shallower than 400 feet, whereas one in around the 50 kHz range is better suited for deep water readings. Dual frequency transducers cover the entire spectrum. Also, chirp enhanced transducers dramatically enhance readings. This is due, in part, to their broadcasting three signals versus a single signal from standard transducers. They also enable the selecting of various frequencies around the standard 200 and 50 kHz settings. Multi-signal readings provide much greater target separation. That is, fish are more clearly defined regardless if they're tightly stalking bait or holding tight to bottom or over a wreck. It's the same with bottom structure as the slightest vegetation or growth can be distinguished along with any forms of life residing there. Choose the right sonar that is right for your style of fishing, match it up with a quality chirp enhanced transducer, and you'll always know what's underneath your boat or around it. Mercury Performance Stats, Dry Tortugas, Florida Keys. Seas, two to three feet. Power, Triple Mercury Verado 400 horsepower outboards. Props, Mercury Inertia Eco 21 inch pitch. Assistant Cruise, 3,800 RPMs. Speed, 38 miles per hour. Total miles, 180. Total fuel burned, 172 gallons. George Pofferomo's World of Saltwater Fishing is brought to you by King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Papa's Pilar Artesian Crafted Rum, never a spectator. Starbright, professional grade boat care products. As I mentioned earlier, the dry tortugas are considered by many to be the last frontier for great angling. So, whereas a 70 mile run years ago used to be a major undertaking, today it's short work, and you look at the Delft's business. Daniel Delft, his father, Billy Delft, they run big center consoles. They get out here in one day. They leave in the morning around seven o'clock, fish the tortugas for their charters, come back in the afternoon around five o'clock. That's a long run, but you have the boats that could do that and they can do one day trips on it. It's really amazing how far the fishing industry has come. But then again, I guess the downside, what used to be far away is now a lot closer because of our advancements. Yeah, so I mean, overall, we had a great trip. We were able to go get the red snappers, the scamps for the eating food and we got a big black gripper on light tackle. I mean, that was just spectacular. It's not too often that people catch a 55 pound black on 20 pound braid. I had a great time showing George how um, the Delfts do it down in the Tortugas. It's kind of my second home out there. My grandfather and my dad kind of figured that whole place out and it's, it really is special to me to uh, be able to share, you know, how the Delfts do it. And I could tell you, this is one smart and incredibly nice kid. To spend time with him was a pure joy. 
And though he's only 17, don't let that fool you. He could get out here and he could catch fish with the best of them. He was raised by the best of them. His grandfather, Ralph Delph, and his dad, Billy Delph. Just a great kid. So definitely kudos to uh, Daniel Delph. And I jokingly, somewhat jokingly, told his dad, I said, he is so good that Billy, in 10 years, he's gonna put you in a rocking chair. If you'd like to keep up with our fishing adventures, please follow me on Instagram. I'm at George Poveromo. On Facebook, I'm at facebook.com forward slash george.poveromo. And you can view our episodes at any time on our YouTube channel, George Poveromo TV. We'll see you out on the water.